Hello and welcome from New Zealand. It is good that in New Zealand now you are certain in your pathway to residence when you have a job, a skilled job and a job that comes with specific requirements, usually jobs for people with skills, with qualifications and jobs in areas that New Zealand wants. No one comes to a new country, relocates the family, uproots in their home country if there is no certainty of residence. Work visas are temporary visas and therefore always at risk that you might have to leave when you lose your job. But New Zealand now has made very clear how you get from work to residence. In some cases, nearly immediately. That sets it apart from many other countries that are desirable for migrants. And it also means that when you study in New Zealand or elsewhere, you get those skills that you need in order to get one of these jobs that then gets you to residence. We have a system in New Zealand that for skills related work, we have two different pathways to residence. One is related to your work. That's the topic we're talking about today. The other is related to your overall skills, qualifications, possibly past work. We call that the skilled migrant category on points. And we're talking about that in a different video. Today, we will talk about the three pathways that you have to residence in New Zealand when you either have a job on the green list tier one. Those are few jobs that are very highly sought after in New Zealand. With those jobs, you pretty much apply for residence right away. The second option is that you have a job that is on the green list tier two many jobs. Those are jobs where you need to work for two years in that job in order to then be able to apply residence. And the third category is any job does not have to be on the green list where you are paid at least two times the median wage for New Zealand. And right now that is $55.52 double the median wage three different pathways. They are all connected to work. And work means that you either have a job in which you currently work, or you have a job offer for a qualifying job. And I will walk you through what the requirements are. The important thing to know is that applications under these three categories, green list tier one, green list tier two and highly paid are prioritized when it comes to residence applications. They go before all other skills-based residence applications and therefore are decided very quickly. Right now, Immigration New Zealand indicates that if you make an application under the green list tier one qualification, your residence visa might be decided in as short as six weeks. That's smoking hot and gives certainty to migrants that there will be a fast decision on you becoming a resident. And of course, once you are a resident in New Zealand, you no longer need any visa. You can travel in and out. You can buy a home. You are welcomed in New Zealand. So in general, for any of these three categories of residence visas that come from work, you need to meet some requirements. They are that you meet the health and character requirements for residence class visas. You need to be 55 years or younger for the principal applicant at the time the application is made. You have to make sure that you have minimum English requirements and there is a list of what is required to show that. And you must have 
an employment that qualifies. And that employment is different, of course, for the three different categories. Either it is employment on green list tier one, on tier two, or highly paid. Now, when you look at the green list employment, not every employment that sounds similar to what is on the list is acceptable. The way Immigration New Zealand works is that the employment that you want to claim has to be employment that is on their list, tier one or tier two. And for that employment, they go to a catalog called ANSCO version 1.2. And they then look at what the qualification requirements and the job tasks are for that employment. You must substantially meet those job tasks and description and qualifications. That means that if you have a job that is named similar to a job on the green list, the content, the work, what you do in that job must be meeting the ANSCO requirements. And of course, if there is a qualification needed, you must hold that qualification. In some employment and some jobs, the qualification can be replaced by so many years of work experience where you do exactly that job, but not in all. We want to make sure that people who come as doctors actually did go to medical school. And therefore, in some cases, you cannot replace the qualifications with work experience. ANSCO will tell you what is required and, and immigration advisors do this for a living. We constantly look at whether a job actually matches the requirements. It is not quite easy sometimes to do that, especially when qualifications are earned overseas when job titles are different overseas. So consider using an advisor for this job. It is hard to get that right in some cases. So let's look at the first category, green list tier one. That's an immediate pathway to residence. You can apply as of 5 September 22. And by the time you watch this, it's probably pretty close to get your application together. It takes a few weeks to assemble an application for such an application because you have work details, employment details, ANSCO matching to do, and you have the applicant's details in order to meet the requirements. There is some time involved. Get onto that early. These jobs are never good when they are rushed. Tier one. For tier one, you must meet the requirements I just talked about in general, and you must hold an offer or you're working in an occupation for an accredited employer in New Zealand, and it has to be an occupation on the tier one green list matching substantially the ANSCO description of that job. If you meet those requirements, you can apply pretty much instantly for residence in New Zealand. You have to make sure that you meet the requirements. Six weeks roughly for a decision. Lightning speed for residence in New Zealand. Let's look at what the work requirements are for this tier one. Clearly, you have to have a job offer or a current employment, and it has to be for an occupation listed on tier one. You have to make sure that you are full-time. Full-time in New Zealand is 30 hours per week or more, and those hours have to be guaranteed. It has to be part of the contract that you work at least that many hours. This has to be permanent employment or for a fixed term of no shorter than 12 months, and it has to be genuine employment. That means that Immigration New Zealand will check if this is a job that really exists, a job that is consistent with what the company your employer does, a job that is sustainable, not a job purely created 
to meet the requirements of a visa. For this visa, you also can apply when you have a contract for work rather than ongoing permanent work, provided that the contract is at least six months of duration. In some of these jobs, occupational registration, for instance, with the medical society, the teacher council, and so forth is a requirement. And in that case, it is presumed when you have that registration that you meet the qualification requirements. If there is no occupational registration required, Immigration New Zealand will check with ANSCO to make sure you actually do what is required for that employment. Let's look at option two, not immediate application for residence, but you work your way towards that residence, generally by two years in the job. That job can have started as of, or we count the time, as of 29 September 21. And at the time you apply, it must be a job for an accredited employer. After the two years are completed, you are eligible to apply for residence. This is the green list tier two occupation list. We have the same general application requirements of meeting health and character requirements for residence class visas. You have to be 55 years or younger at the time you apply. You have to meet English requirements. And there is a list for those requirements that are acceptable. For this tier two green list category, you need to be on a specific visa in order to be able to apply. Either you are on an employer accredited work visa. Those are the visas that began to issue in mid-22. Or you are on any other work visa that was applied before 4 July 2022. And the work must be for an accredited employer. The important part is that the employer must be accredited at the time you make the application. That means that they do not have to be accredited for the whole period of the two years. But at the time you apply, you must be working for an employer who is accredited. And accreditations for employers are not that hard to get. Immigration advisors know how to help employers with that. It usually is a question of several weeks of collecting information, uh, watching a number of educational movies when you are in the hiring position at the employer, and then applying for accreditation. No big deal. It just takes a little bit of time, and advisors usually do that for you. Again, for Tier 2 on the green list, the employment must be genuine. It must be for a permanent contract or at least 12 months or longer. And it needs to be an employment where you meet the requirements for that job. If in between accredited employer work visas, you were on an interim visa, that is acceptable as well. You cannot be on any other visa for tier two category residence visa applications unless you hold an accredited employer work visa for the time you worked. And of course, you have to work for an accredited employer. However, if you have applied for a work visa before 4 July 2022, then any other work visa will count or a critical purposes visitor visa with work rights you then do not have to be on an accredited employer work visa the whole 24 months. The 24 months that you need to show have to be within the past 30 months from your date of application for the residence visa. That means effectively you have six months after the 24 months to apply. If there are breaks in your work, for instance, parental leave, then that counts towards your 24 months. You do not have to work extra because you took parental leave. If a tier two green list occupation is removed from the green list, 
while you were working during your 24 months, that's a problem, isn't it? Because then at the time you apply, it no longer is in the list. Your work still counts if you continue to work in the same position, the same occupation that you held when it was still listed on the green list. And you have to continue to meet the requirements as if the role was still on the green list. If you cannot meet the full 24 months of work for this work to residence visa, then you can still be considered for residence if the balance to make up the 24 months is no longer for a work on the green list tier two job, but any highly paid job. And the highly paid job is any job that pays you $55.52 per hour, twice the median wage. None of those jobs have to be listed on a green list. That means any job that is highly paid can make up the additional months that you might be missing from your 24 months for an application for residence visa. And in general, the 24 months that you want to show for your right to apply for residence does not have to be consecutive. You can have blocks that you add together to make up 24 months, but for each of the blocks you want to count, you must meet the requirements. The third category under this very quick way to get residence in New Zealand is being highly paid. Highly paid is a definition of your pay. It is not important what job you hold. $55.52 per hour currently makes you highly paid. It is twice the median wage in New Zealand. That might change in the future. And it is important that you show that's what you were paid to qualify under the high pay category. You still have to meet all the other general requirements, 55 age or younger at the time you apply, character and health consistent with residence class standards, English qualifications based on skilled migrant category standards, the same requirements as for the other two categories, except that the job you do does not have to be on the green list. For the high pay category, working in any job, but being paid twice the medium wage, you must be on an accredited employer work visa for the whole time, or an interim visa between accredited employer work visas, which means that for that time, you must have worked for an accredited employer. However, if you have applied for your work visa before 4 July 22, you can apply for this category on any work visa or on a critical purposes visitor visa with work rights. You do not have to be on an accredited employer work visa for the whole time. If you have received raises in the past and when you started out working, you were not yet in the highly paid category, then the highly paid period starts once you reach the minimum pay required, twice the median wage, then you start counting towards the 24 months. Periods before where you did not earn the high rate will not be included in the 24 months. Similarly, if your pay drops, then when you start falling below the minimum requirement of twice the medium wage, we stop counting the months for employment and you then have to wait until you reach the minimum pay again for your employment period to again count towards the 24 months. Now, how do you show that you are qualified to do the job? And the rules there are quite simple you provide evidence. If you have a qualification from New Zealand that usually is already listed under the New Zealand's qualification framework, that means that you have the ability to show that your qualification meets the one required by the ANSCO listing for the occupation that you claim. If your education, your qualification is from outside New Zealand, 
you can have your qualification recognized. That takes a couple of weeks and some money. And you then would know whether it is recognized as the qualification needed under ANSCO. Clearly, if you are a member of a professional body, then that is a good evidence of your ability to do that job. You would need to provide your employment agreement that shows details of your job description and what your job is, and that will be matched towards the ANSCO listing of that employment. And the employment agreement must meet the New Zealand requirements for a lawful employment agreement. It has to include all of the details that Immigration New Zealand wants to see. And again, your immigration advisor knows that and can help you with making sure that the paperwork is sufficient for your application. So to summarize, there is now a very clear, transparent pathway from work to residence in New Zealand, three pathways, green list tier one, immediate, green list tier two, two years worked, any job highly paid, twice medium rate, two years of work, and you can apply for residence. This also means that if you decide to study in New Zealand, you now know which studies might help you to get one of the jobs on that green list or highly paid so that you can apply for residence. But if for whatever reason, this three pathway does not work for you, remember that there is a different pathway to residence, skilled migrant category, a point-based system, that system does not require a specific employment or that you currently have a job. It is based on points for your skills, your work experience, and other factors that make you successful in New Zealand. So if this part doesn't work, hold your horses, wait a little. The skilled migrant category details will be released shortly and then you know what the options for you are under that pathway as well. Make sure that for a residence application, you seek good advice. This is the application form where Immigration New Zealand has the highest requirements. For instance, if for a student visa or a work visa, past character issues, visa declines or convictions were acceptable, then for residence visa applications, they might not be because the hurdle is highest for residence applications because those applications are so important. Make sure you seek advice. If you have any questions, you know how to make contact. Bye-bye.